Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? He can't be anything else but good. There's no evil or no darkness or, or no shadow of turning in him. That's what the word says. Amen. That's not just us uh, professing. It's good to confess and profess how good God is. But the word said it first. Amen. And we're just repeaters of the word. Amen. Do you ever say the word? Yes. Uh, a couple years ago, you know, I, I was, you know, we have some terminology and some phrases and we have lots of visitors, so you may not be used to them. But one here would be, we're standing on the word. Do you stand on the word? If you, know what, if you don't know what that means, then you, you have an attitude about you that this word works. I'm staying with the word. I'm not going. I don't go by what I see, hear, feel, all that stuff. The word is the final authority. authority. And a couple years ago, I was just standing. I said, Lord, I'm standing. Can't you see me standing? <laughs> you know, you talk to him like that sometimes because he loves us. I'm, and I'm standing on this, and I'm believing for this, and I'm remaining in faith. I'm, I'm not doubting, not wavering. And, and, and that scripture popped up in my heart, just come out of me, you know, that he hastens or watches over. One translation would say, he watches over his word. And help me, Church of the Harvest, to do what? To perform it. Says that in the word. I don't, I'm already off script, but that's, I don't have it before him, but I promise you. It says he watches over Kristen's word, watches over Jason's word, says it, he watches over his word to perform it. Now the church, we have to be careful. We've all turned into a bunch of performers. And we're not performers, we're believers. He's the performer. We stand and we believe the word and he performs the word. That's right. Hallelujah. Through, through men and women, yes. But it's because they, they stood and believed and he began to operate. And they cooperated with the operation. Amen. But it was a couple years ago, I'm telling you a story about myself. Lord, I'm standing. Can't you see me standing about this issue? I'm believing you. I'm believing you. I'm believing you. And he said, have you given me any word to perform on? I said, not much lately. I'm just standing here crying. <laughs> you know, we're not whiner babies, are we? You know, the very thing that kept the children of Israel out of the promised land was whiner baby. Yeah. Grumbling and complaining. Yes. And grumbling and complaining and whining about a situation breeds doubt and unbelief. Yes. How do I know? Because they came out of the land, the spies sent 12 in. They came out of the land and they began to complain about what they saw. And the very next thing that manifests is fear. And fear and doubt and, and unbelief, are, they, they uh, share the same sleeping bag. Yep. They're all together. So he said, have you given me any word to watch over? Well, how do you, how do you give? I'm asking these questions, and I, hopefully I'm getting to my sermon here, and I'm going to go fast. I don't want to keep you as long. But how do you give him word to watch over? What's that? We speak the word. We speak the word. Reinhard Bonnke said this. He said, the word of God in, his in your mouth is just as powerful as it was in his mouth. And most of us is like, I don't know that I believe that. But he gave us the written word so we could speak the word. Yes. Amen. Yes. How did Jesus answer the enemy every time? He, the word. he said, for it is written. So he had man write it so you could speak it. Yes. Listen to Brother Caps in the last couple of weeks and, and his teaching just, you know, at this stage of my life just revolutionizes some of my thinking. And he said, you know, the word doesn't say that faith cometh by reading. Right. How many read their word this week? Aren't you glad you should? You know, that's the, a process into getting faith. But he said, the Bible says in Romans 10 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says, it doesn't say faith cometh by reading the word. So when you read the word, the only way you can speak the word is read the word and get the word in you, right? And then you speak the word. 
And you need to hear yourself speak the word. Speaking the word over the situation. And as I was praying about this concept or this thought this week, this, I was in my office praying, so I just wrote it down. And I'm, I'm proud of myself because I'm not much to write things down when I get them. And you know, if you don't write them down, where do they go? Away. <laughs> right? You forget them. Because, because. Maybe some of you don't, but I have done that. But anyhow, I'm praying. I was like, Lord, I'm not a whiner, baby. I don't come before you whining. It doesn't say we come whinerly to the throne room of grace to beg and plead, does it? It says we, be, we come where? Boldly, or how, I should say. We come boldly into the throne room of grace. And we are confident when we put our petitions there, or our request, or make him known. He's already known, but he wants to hear you make it known to him in that throne room that he hears us when we pray, Right? So I'm praying about, Lord, I'm not a whiner, baby. I don't want to preach from a whiner position, a grumbling position. Uh, Pastor Bill all the time said, we are what? Winners. Winners. Got to bring that back because there's lots of people that don't know Pastor Bill and Vicki, but uh, potentially almost every Sunday he would somewhere in a sermon or end it or just in his exhorting time saying, we are Winners. winners. And the Bible teaches you that. It says you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, coming, going, head, not the tail. But as I'm praying, I heard this. Many times, this, and I wrote this down, many times we're more developed. You'll develop in what you talk. What you talk about the most is what you'll begin to develop in. And when I say develop, your way of thinking, your mindset. It says uh, many times we're more developed in the negative than we are in the positive. Have you been in the world this week? Did you listen to anybody? Me and this wire, we're getting ready to do the, the hot dance here. <laughs> Did you listen to anybody? Did you turn on the news? Have you spit on social media? I would say that if you're not careful, that, that most of us, I'm not saying everybody here is, but you have marvelous opportunity to be way no, more developed in the negative. Yep. And how does people express the negative? Well, they talk it. they talk it. Talking the problem, talking the issue, talking the problem. You know, I worked in construction for years, and I actually worked with some people. I was like, I think you would rather talk about the issue we're having, building this building or whatever it is, than fixing it. I can see everyone's excited about this this morning, aren't you? I, I said, we have talked about it for two hours, and it still sets there an issue. Yeah. Let's fix it. Yes, we need to discuss things. I'm not saying you never discuss things. I'm not saying, you know, if something bad happens, you don't need to go to your spouse or to your children and discuss that issue. But you better know that you don't want to develop yourself more in the negativity or talking the problem than uh, talking the fix. That's right. Amen. Amen. That we're much more developed if we're not watching it. I, I'm just, you know, I'm not saying you are, but you have the marvelous opportunity to be much more developed in the negative than in the positive. That's right. Why? That's what I heard as I'm praying. Well, why, why is that? Because we have talked the problem so long that we have faith in the problem. We have talked the problem so long that we believe more in the problem than we believe in the solution. Yep. The solution is his word. Yes. But faith cometh by hearing his word. So when you read his word, step out somewhere and speak his word. That's good. Can I use you, Brent? All your family's here, so I'm going to use Brent. You ready? <laughs> You can take it, right? No, it's good. But the, one of the first times I was, me and Brent talking about spiritual things, what? Has it been four years? Five years? Five years ago. And, and uh, sitting in his office, I was building some stuff for them. And uh, he had, it was hot, so he's like, come in my office. And I will get the word. I know I'm, I'm you know, well, you're preaching, talking about the word. Are you going to get to the word? Yes, we will, and I'll hurry, all right? But uh, these things will help you. 
examples and things like that. But we were in there, and we got talking about, we'd talk about spiritual things, talk about church, talk about the Word, talk about different things. And, and I think you said, what, what really hits you the hardest out of the beginning when I begin to talk about prayer? And you were like, praying out loud? I was like, yeah, praying out loud. And, and, and are you ready? I'm going to tell you. You said, well, I don't know other than praying with the kids at night that I've ever, about the issues of life or whatever, prayed out loud. And I said, you know, being nice as I could, said, maybe you've never prayed. And he was like, what? <laughs> I've never prayed? And I said, well, we don't tell people. We'll really be thinking for you, thinking about you this weekend. The whole thought process is part of it, and it's an important part. But you don't tell people. You don't get on Facebook. How, how many is a Facebook prayer poster? That's good. I'm glad you put, you know, hey, we're praying. Well, do it. Make sure you do it. But you don't put on there, we're thinking. Right? right? right. So prayer and speaking are, are the same thing. Yeah. So what's the most wonderful thing that you would speak? Well, the word. Going back to what he said, I watch over this. This is God himself saying, I watch over my word. So when you speak his word, he is watching over it. To do what? To bring it to pass, to perform it. Well, I did that today. It didn't happen tomorrow. Okay. Are you going to turn into a whiner? Because that's what I was doing. I'm not saying that's what you've done. I was whining about something, and he said, you haven't given me enough word to watch over. Yeah. You haven't given me any word to perform on. Amen? So go to Proverbs real quick. I told you I'd get in the Bible here directly. And we're going to go fast. It's 1047. Somebody holler at noon, and I'll make sure I start stopping. Proverbs 18, verse 21. A lot of people have probably heard this verse. But it says this in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the what? Power. The power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Death and life. Well, we could say, we know that. Who's been cut by somebody's tongue? Are you going to play? Okay. I'll preach for another. If she plays, I preach longer. Death and life in the power of the tongue. Remember the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will not hurt me. That is so far from the truth. Most of you carry a wound longer from a word than a stick and a stone. They'll cut deeper. Like, you know, someone hits you with a stick, you go get stitches and what, three to four weeks, you can't even hardly tell. A little mark there. Someone cut you with a, with a word, years go by before some people get healed up from that. But then you turn that around and how you speak about your life and your situation and your family and your finances and your health and your job and, and your church and your how you speak about that. The power in the tongue, it's saying, of life and death. Deuteronomy tells, tells me this in uh, 3019. It says that he uh, set life and death before us. Blessings and cursings. And he said what? Choose life. How do I choose life? With my, with my tongue, with my mouth. I align my mouth with the blessing. I align my mouth with, with the, the, not the curse. I align my mouth with the life side of things. Amen. This is, this, is a, this is a principle that if the body of Christ will grasp it and do it, will drastically change individuals' lives, the shape of the church, the shape of the American church, the shape of the church in the world. Amen. Because it's the word. Life and death, let's put it this way. Let's get it in Southern Illinois terms, right? Life and death are out there. There's death out there. There's life out there. There's blessing out there. There's cursing out there. I always tell you, I tell it, I know, I just tell it again. Miss Georgie Bora, some of you don't know her. Some of you would have known her from Sims. She was my uh, tutor because I wasn't very good in school, and I had to take summer classes with her. 
and she was sweet, and I always talk about that drink she gave me every week. I don't know what it was. It wasn't Tang. I don't know what it was. It was wonderful, except for the orange pills floating around in it. I didn't like the orange pills floating in it. <laughs> she says, oh, I eat those. I was like, I don't eat orange pills, you know. But she would give me my worksheets to do. And bless her heart, she didn't know that I could see the answers. Like she had printed them off, and it was multiple choice. And every one of them, I could see the answer. I don't know, because she was probably, my land, she might have been 75, 80 at that time, a retired school teacher. Is that right? Was she a school teacher? Anybody know that? Was that? I don't want to be truthful. And maybe her eyes couldn't see it, but she had, re she had printed those sheets off, and I could see the answers. Well, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to choose life. I'm going to choose the blessing. I went down through there. I was a little ornery because I also hesitated like, I'm thinking about this one when I know what I'm going to put. And I'm even smart enough to miss one every once in a while because I didn't want a good thing to go away. It turned into when you had to go to your, your, your summer class that, you know, most kids would never want to go. And I was like, yeah, let's do this thing. <laughs> I'm going to get some of that orange drink. <laughs> And I'm going to miss two questions. And my mom's like, she done you so good, and I'm sure she did. But I say that to say, the answer is before us. Choose life, in Deuteronomy he said. He, he, we, we showed you in Proverbs before that. He said, the power of life and death in your mouth. He's saying to choose life, the power of life and death in your mouth, in your tongue. He said to choose life. Where's the choice? Yeah, mentally you got to make it, but physically you got to begin to speak it. There's something, there's something. God created the heavens, the, the world, separated the waters and the, the earth, put the birds and the, the creeping things in motion, the cattle in the field with what? His very words. And you are the only thing on planet earth that is made in his image and after his likeness. So he placed within the human being life and death, and he gave them a tool by which they could choose, and that is their tongue. And we get back to the children of Israel that couldn't go into the blessing, that couldn't walk in what God had for them. I mean, it's a type of what we do today. You know, the children of Israel being a type of the church, the children of Israel. We're the children of God now if we're born again. So it's a type of the very thing that goes on today. Aren't you thankful for grace, though? Because I, I, I kind of get back to that. I just, I, lately I have a hard time leaving that January of 2020 and me praying and the Lord showing me the church standing at the Jordan, get, uh, trying to make the decision whether they're going to go into Canaan or not. And I say this all the time, and I don't want to beat on your theology, but uh, Canaan land is not a type of heaven. It's not a type of heaven. There's songs that say it is. Sweet Canaan land one day when we get there. Heaven will be grand. Don't misunderstand me. But a Canaan, the children of Israel crossing the, into the promise of Canaan land is a type of the blessing is a type of what he's saying here. Blessing and cursing, I've, it, it's out there, choose life. It's a type of life. It's a type in this day and age that the Christian is meant to live in. We're not supposed to live from calamity to calamity. And we're not supposed to live from issue to issue, problem to problem. That doesn't mean we don't have calamity that happens sometimes. And that doesn't mean that there's not issues in life and, and things like that. But he said that we're made to live from glory to glory. He said we're made to live from glory to glory, strength to strength, faith to faith. Amen. Joy to joy. And I, I dare to say the reason maybe some of us or many of us are not because we stand at the water's edge of crossing into Canaan and we're complaining about the issues. Amen? This is, 
<laughs> you should be preaching a Christmas, you know, jolly. But this is truth. He said, blessing, cursing, have I placed before you. Choose life. He gave us, just like Miss Georgie Bora did, <laughs> she gave me the answers. Amen. I'm so grateful for the answer. Got me through summer school quick. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Vicki said something. Well, she said it several times the last week, or last week, last year that I've been around her. And I, and I didn't even, I couldn't compute it at first, but as she said it again in our board meeting this last Monday, I was like, Lord, I want to understand what she's saying. And you pay attention. I've always said pay attention, especially when the, when the ones above you in the spirit, and I don't mean they're greater than you, but they, they've, they've treaded farther than most of us. They've walked out there farther than most of us. And she said, and, and the Lord showed me what she was saying. She said, many, many of us have gotten into Christ. Who's accepted Jesus? Praise the Lord as your person. You are in him. You are in him, or he's in us. That's right. Many people have got them. Let me get it right. I think that's help. See how that works? Help mate. Many people have got them him in them but they never went on and got in him so that's the phrase she said many she said i think a lot of us have an understanding of salvation we receive jesus as our personal savior and he comes in us the word says that god sends the spirit of his son and he lives within us so many believers have the concept of i've got him in me christ in me the hope of glory Amen? But I was like, well, what's she mean then that by we're not maybe grasping or not going on to getting into him? And remember a couple weeks ago, I think I said, and I quoted Norval Hayes, the guy come to him and said, oh, I know Jesus, I know Jesus, and his life was a mess, and he was uh, uh, pronouncing things that God had did when, you know, God don't, he don't know evil in him, and God don't do evil, and God don't do darkness, and he's accusing God of certain things, but he's saying, I know Jesus, and he said, no, you don't. You don't know Jesus. He said, yes, I do know Jesus. He said, no, you met Jesus, but you haven't got to know him. And that's what Pastor Vicky said. Many of us, if we don't watch it, we've got him in us. That's number one. That's the most, the greatest miracle and the most crucial thing that you'll ever do in your life is invite Jesus in because that's going to seal you for eternity. And I'll visit you in heaven. I'll look at your mansion. You check out mine. All these interior decorated people, I mean, they're going to be like, look what I got now. Let me come help you with yours when you get to heaven. Amen? But the in him is the here reality. It's the living here in Canaan land. I said, "Whoa, Lord, I'm getting it. I begin to see it. And they taught it to us for 17 years. And I'm like, I'm just now beginning to understand that living in him is the, the, the here and the now, living in him, being a doer of the word. I said, how do I get more in him? Well, learn the word, obviously, but be a doer of the word. He said, as you do the word, you're getting into him. When you give him word to watch over, you're getting into him. When you come to the right place and the preacher preaches this way, I'm not just propping myself up, but I'm telling you, this is right. I've seen it change my life. And if God can change my life with an in him reality, he can change anybody in his life with some in him realities. You say, I got issues, preacher. Good. I know the issue fixer. And I know the way to get it fixed is not grumbling and complaining. It's not uh, programming my mind in the negative. It's aligning my mouth with his word and speaking it and watching it and standing on it and holding fast to it and seeing it come to pass in my life. What we say in the office this morning, what's, what's Kenneth W. say about I won't give up? I will not be defeated and I will not quit. Therefore, he'll never lose. You only lose when the game's over, right? If you don't get out of the game, you don't lose. And he wouldn't have told us to hold fast if we didn't need to hold on to things. How do you hold on to it? You, you speak it. My mind's going this way. My mouth's going this way. 
That's how you keep doubt, fear, and unbelief out of your heart is with your mouth. Did you know that? Because whatever remains in your mouth the most gets in your heart. If it stays in your head, begins to come out of your mouth, eventually it gets in your heart. And out of the heart come the issues of life. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So some of you may have to be like reprogramming this system. Because what, what did he tell me in prayer early this week? Many times we're more developed in the negative. We're developed to talk about what well, ain't happening. And we begin, to, we begin to talk it and talk it and talk it and talk it. If it remains in your head and in your mouth long enough, it gets in your heart. And then when it's in your heart, it's harder to tear out of there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it'll come out with the word. Amen? Amen. Let me check my notes here to see if there's anything else. The Apostle Paul said, we believe, therefore we speak. I believe personally, therefore I speak. Preaching it myself this morning. I quoted Luke 6, 45, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Go with me to 1 John. We'll try to end with this. Wrap it up later. First letter of John, first John three twenty four, I believe. It says, Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall continue in the Son and in the Father. That is not what I wanted to. That is not the scripture I thought. <laughs> I like that one. Isn't it good? Am I in the right book? I am not in the right book. Bear with me. 324. I was on the wrong page. And he that keepeth the commandments dwell in him. Listen up. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us listen to the first part of this verse he that keepeth his commandments he that become a doer a speaker of the word following after him speaking and doing the word it says that dwelleth in him and he in them you're going to cross if you'll speak the word and be a doer of the word and get on the positive side and come up the mountain from the side of victory, you're going to find out that you start getting revelation of the in him. That me in him and him in me. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, that's enough. Stand up with me. Christmas sermon to preach. But I don't want you to stand at the edge of the water like the children of Israel and never cross into the blessing. Do you know when they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years till they died, they were still God's children? They were still God, and He even did things for them. He made quail fly in, He made manna fall. He made water come out of a rock so they could drink. And I'm back to January 2020 when I'm praying, and the Lord showed me that. And he basically showed me that the church has kind of wandered in that wilderness. And we've, been, we've got things. He's taken care of us here, and we've had some outpourings here, and we've had some outbreaks here. But wouldn't it be far better to get over in Canaan land? Wouldn't it be far better to cross over into the blessing, the fullness of the blessing? Do you know when they crossed over there, what's the first one of the things they ran into? Walls, <laughs> Jericho, issues. But when they, when they got behind their leader and they kept their mouth positive and they didn't give up an evil report, they took exactly what God had for them. 
Amen. You should get excited about that. That means you can go over there. They had to physically fight. Jesus come and want it all. Now we just got to talk it. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you don't have to kill somebody? Yeah. Woo, that's something to be excited about. Before Jesus, they had to physically go in and deal with the evil and, and overtake the land. Now you can just take your stance, hold fast in faith, speak and align yourself with the word. And God shows up by the Holy Ghost on the scene and begins to turn things around. And if you'll be like, when it comes to your mind, because it's going to come to your mind, it ain't working. You say, no, no, I remember. I remember on that Sunday standing there that I made up my mind and I aligned my mouth. So it's working. It has to be done first over in the spirit. And then you'll see it in the natural. And he wouldn't have to, he wouldn't have to hang on if he wouldn't have, He said, hold fast. He said, when you've done all you know to do, to do what? Stand on it. He said, add to your faith patience. <laughs> oh, I ain't going to pray for patience. I heard a lady at work one time tell me, she said, I ain't praying for patience. You know how that works if you pray for patience? I said, girl, you know too much already. <laughs> she goes, what do I mean? What do you mean? I said, if you know not to pray for patience, then I said, you already know too much. You got to be patient. Wait. That's right. Amen. I told Brent this morning, I said, if the Lord had dumped on me some of the things that he's given to me in the last five, six, seven years, if he would have done that when I was 20, I would have messed it up, man. I just wasn't there. I'm not saying he can't do that for you if you're 20 or 21 or 25, because you may be far uh, advanced than I was when I was that age, but he knows. But if you hold fast, I'll tell you, get there quicker if you get your mouth lined up with it. If you'll be a Mark 11, 23, 24, 25 guy or girl, amen, and begin to line your mouth, it says, whatever, whoever says and prays can have whatever, whatever they say. Amen. We've been taught well. He does three times as much teaching in them scriptures on saying, one time on believing. Most of us got the believing down. We're believers. I can go through this word to most of you. It's maybe not all of you. I wish it, wish it was all of you, but maybe not. I can go through this word and you're like, yes, the ark floated. Yes, Moses or Noah built it. Yes, there was a burning bush. I believe that. Yes, there was an Abraham and an Isaac and a Jacob. Yes, there was a Canaan and a promised land. But now let's get in the boat and believe it. Or let's get in the boat and begin to line our mouth and speak it. Yes, he set before me blessings and cursings and said, choose life, life and death. He told me that the power of life and death is in my tongue. Make that thing a life instrument. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen.